Welcome to the official YouTube channel of Fortunia.com. I'm your host, AJ, and today we're doing a quick analysis of the official full trailer for Masters of the Universe Revolution. It dropped uh, just yesterday. Let's put a date on it. This past Thursday, January 11th, and I'm extremely excited to talk about it. So let's get right into it. So it begins, this trailer begins uh, on a somber tone. And we hear the sounds of funeral bells, and we see what looks to be Duncan approaching the side of Adam, dressed in black. And we see a casket as we hear the voiceover of King Randor say, death comes for us all, even for kings. And boom, right? There we have it. The death of King Randor. You know, we all felt this coming, right? In our bones. Ever since we saw the teaser poster for Masters of the Universe Revolution when it dropped, we saw that crown on the ground. And we all said in unison, uh-oh, King Randor was going to die. And then there we have it. It's confirmed. So King Randor sets up this question for Adam. You know, Randor tells Adam he's going to have to make a decision. Will he rule as Adam or rule as He-Man? Because he can't be both. But you know what? I kind of feel like he can be both. I mean, if he really wanted to be, you know? <laughs> I mean, uh, King Adam in the morning drinking his royal coffee and then King He-Man in the afternoon, you know, doing his workouts. But, uh, but hey, what do I know? Uh, <laughs> moving on. So, so here is King Randor dead. What a somber scene. But, you know, this begs a question to be asked. What killed him, right? We saw him healthy as an ox in that clip Netflix released where He-Man was battling uh, Scareglow and Subternia. And Randor flew down, you know, from his uh, Cloud Crusher ship, um, donning the armor and joining the battle. And he didn't look ill there. He didn't look sick there. So does Scareglow or something else in Subternia, you know, deal Randor a death blow in the end? Maybe. I guess we'll find out. So then we cut to the Netflix logo and we hear that song. That song, you know, history repeats itself. Try and you'll succeed. <laughs> yeah, anyone who's a fan of Karate Kid knows that song and it's like move over bonnie tyler and you're uh, holding out a hero song which is amazing it's a great song um that's the song that played during the revelation masters of the universe revelation teaser trailer but they one upped it here with uh you're the best around <laughs> i can't say by artist uh joe esposito i believe and it's so awesome so so awesome and it just gets you right into that you know, 80s mood. All right. So now the attack, right? It looks like there was a explosion here at Eternos. And it seems that it happened during the funeral because we see Adam and Duncan in their funeral wear, as well as Cringer, Audra, and Orko, and then two mystery figures, you know? The one in the cloak might be Lynn or sorceress tila you know in a, like a funeral garb or hey it could even be queen marlena um but then this other person i just can't quite tell i can't quite make it out so you know we're gonna have to table that one for now and we'll just have to see all right and then we see motherboard's forces attacking at eternos you know pulling down he-man statue and we finally hear the debut of actor William Shatner's voice, you know, Captain Kirk, uh, say these words. Eternia needs a king. All right. So let's uh, address the, the elephant in the room, right? We hear William Shatner's voice a couple times in his trailer, but we never see his, you know, who the voice is coming out of. It almost feels like a narration. Now, we know that uh, William Shatner is not playing Granamir. Um, the actor that is actually playing Granamir, uh, we'll talk about that later in this analysis. So could William Shatner be playing Gwildor? You know, the way he's portraying himself, the way he's, he's doing his voice acting, you know, it, I'm starting to think maybe it's Gwildor, you know? I, I'm not sure, but 
I guess we'll find out. All right, so then we see this cool shot of uh, Adam rushing to the rescue from the funeral and on Cringer transforming midair. How awesome is that? He's transforming midair, a midair transformation scene. And then uh, next up, we see He-Man confronting, you know, and I, I thought this before in my teaser trailer analysis, and I'll double down on it now. Uh, he's confronting a techno virus infused Mantena. Actually, let's do a side by side comparison right now. This Mantena actually shows up in this trailer. All right, there we are. Now compare those eyes, right? Those are similar eyes. Those are like the same eyes, I think. And how about the little teeth? You know, the little teeth around Mantena's mouth and then the little teeth around that red eye. Yeah, I'm sticking with my prediction. That's a uh, technovirus infused Mantana. And he just grew like to this huge monster. All right, what else do we have? Um, we have the motherboard technovirus infused Skeletor, otherwise known as Skeletech, uh, shooting out those infection cables, you know, right at too bad to give him the virus. And we saw that already, right, at the footage shown at the 2023 San Diego Comic-Con. It actually gave us a different angle, and it actually gave us the results of Too Bad's infection. I'm not going to spoil it here, um, but it, it can be found on the Internet if you're looking for it. Okay. All right. So then we see Skeletech look at his reflection in the crown. And tell us his talents lie on the throne of Eternos, and it's time for a revolution. So now I have to ponder, right? Whose crown is this? Whose crown is this? Because it's not Randor's. Do you see that little, the little gemstone in the center there? It's different. You know, it doesn't match King Randor's crown. So maybe it was King Grayskull's crown from long ago that we saw on that wall. Hmm, I don't know. That's definitely not King Randor's. Okay, moving on. All right, so now, oh man, what an amazing scene. And what a horrifying scene. I mean, the visuals, whew, we see the flesh peeling off the face of Skeletor. And uh, I've seen it on our social media feeds. And, uh, you know, everyone is naturally thinking it's Keldor, right? Uh, and so all I can say to this point and underline up to this point, Skeletor has been a demon, like he, like his original uh, filmation origin. You know, he calls himself a interdimensional demon in Masters of the Universe Revelation. Grayskull's store of secrets is even more vast than this interdimensional demon can dream. He was also called a demon in the three comics that are associated that take place in the Rev continuity, the Revelation Revolution continuity. Uh, he, he was referred to as a demon in the Masterverse story, in that framework so, uh, story with uh, Zodak and Sorceress. The Revelation prequel comics uh, showed him as a demon. And then the latest Forge of Destiny comics release, uh, he was referred to, uh, or he referred to himself as a demon plus skeletor has demon feet he's got those demon toes so that's all we know for you know that's all we know so far but uh we'll see what revolution brings all right uh next we see liberated lynn and that's per her you know that's her name per her um powerhouse animation model sheet and she says here that skeletor is not Skeletor anymore, you know, or Skeletech is not Skeletor anymore. Um, but do you see what she's holding? It appears like Lynn is holding the Havoc staff. She's got the Havoc staff. I mean, that doesn't make sense, right? Not if it's infused into the body of Skeletor, unless, I don't know. So that's interesting. You know what? We should just shelve that for a little later. And uh, and a quick note there, um, in the background, we see an out-of-focus Duncan in his new Man of War armor. We see Man-at-Arms Andra and Queen Marlena that I don't believe Alicia Silverstone is voicing anymore because I didn't see her in the main voice credits, you know? So perhaps 
Gates McFadden from Star Trek is playing Queen Marlena now. I don't know for sure. I guess we'll see. All right, so Skeletor snaps his fingers, and we see, you know, all these Eternians getting infected by the Technovirus, and it's like horrific, and it's, it's very cool. And then uh, next we see Sorceress Tila saying she is here to ask for help, which we assume she's asking Granamir for help. And you know what? Let's play that voice because it's no longer Sarah Michelle Gellar. But uh, playing her is Melissa Benoist. You know, I want to say Melissa Benoit. Benoit, it seems like French, but I think people pronounce it Benoist. So, all right, let's listen to it. I'm here to ask for help. So she sounds good, you know? I think she's going to be great. All right, what else? All right, next we see Leech. Grizzlore and Mantana for the first time, servants of the evil horde, ready to attack, you know, and how awesome do they look, you know, especially here when Grizzlore roars. And how cool, how cool does Mantana look under his arm? <laughs> That's awesome. All right. All right. So next we got this shot right out of a 300 movie. You ever see that movie 300, you know? They, the, the, the movie uh, dealt with the 300 Spartans and they have that stylistic, you know, gorgeous looking slow-mo action here that they made famous in 300. And, um, you know, where Hordak seems to have this, this is Sparta moments as he knocks Horde Skeletor out, you know, over the mountain there and boom, <laughs> sends him flying. Um Actually, is that really Horde Skeletor? No, look at that. Um, those don't look like demon feet. All right. I don't know what that is. Um, he's Hordak's knocking someone. But with that purple lightning coming down, it looks absolutely magnificent. Oh, what a brilliant shot. Great job, Powerhouse Animation. All right, this is awesome. Here is the Horde uh, Castle Grey Skull, where I briefly hypothesize its origin in my poster analysis. And we'll make sure we link that at the end of this video. And this, what we are seeing here sped up, I'm assuming will be the intro to all five episodes. You know, in the beginning, when you watched uh, Masters of the Universe Re Revelation, in the beginning of every 10 episodes, you know, the camera would pull out the mouth of Castle Grey Skull, and then we would get, you know, the episode title, you know. This is what I think is going to happen or with uh, Masters of the Universe Revolution. But instead of the normal Castle Grey Skull, it's going to be this scene. It's going to be the horde infected Castle Grey Skull. And it's going to be the intro, I bet. And it's going to be oh so cool. All right. Next, we see Orko and Lynn casting the spell together and they're doing these moves in unison like like synchronized swimming <laughs> or didn't they do that in the old uh last airbender movie the one that was directed by m night well uh here they are doing it here and the result is some sort of magical uh cylinder that looks pretty well it looks pretty um who knows what it does so I'm going to skip over some shots we've seen before in previous promotional media. And all right, look at this. What a devastating scene. This horde armada surrounding Castle Grayskull with Castle Grayskull transformed. And there is Adam and Cringer looking on. And it looks like Adam is still in his funeral outfit. You know, you wonder, are they having a problem transforming into He-Man and Battle Cat? You know, and, and, and what happens to the, the power when it's infected by a motherboard? Can it be infected? You know, inquiring minds want to know. All right. So next we see Tila's amazing transformation via snake magic. Now, this is something um, I also previously discussed in our poster analysis video which will be linked at the end of this video, as I said before. Moving on. So next we see Adam in a 
devastated Eternos, you know. Um, if you look behind him, it's just rubble. And he's in his uh, funeral suit. And he grabs his power sword. And, yeah, as I look at it, um, think of what Castle Grayskull has become, you know. The more I believe the power, or at least the power sword, is infected by Motherboard's technovirus there. I think that's a infected power sword. So that's going to be, you know, crazy to watch. So Duncan reassures He-Man here, saying it's not about what you hold in your hand, i.e. the power sword. It's about what you hold in your heart, right? So yeah, I think the, the Horde virus here has rendered the power sword useless, you know, or maybe rendered the power itself even useless, which is why Sorceress Tila has to go on a, um, a quest for snake magic, you know, that would make the most sense. All right, so next we get what feels to be the battle of all battles, you know, a sequence of vast, successive shots, you know, mostly action shots, one after another after another. So let's go quickly through some of the new ones that we've never seen before on this trailer. So here we see uh, Duncan in his Man of War flying armor, like Iron Man, you know, leading his fleet of ships to take down the Horde ships. And then we get uh, Mantana here in front of the Horde army blasting away. And then we get a shot of Real Blast and Snout Spout, who were already teased in the footage uh, shown at the San Diego Comic-Con this past summer, uh, where we celebrated it being the first time that the vintage figure Real Blast had ever appeared in animated form. And with Revelation Revolution, there's a lot of firsts. You know, remember, we've, I think it was during my unboxing, I mentioned that um, it was the first time Clamp Champ had ever appeared in animated form. And here we have Real Blast. I'm sure there's others too. Hey, Pig Boy, right? First time he appeared in animated form. Okay. Let me not go off on a tangent. Okay. So next is Granamir. And thankfully, he's wearing his iconic horned helmets and uh he's taking a swipe at that horde creature that i'm thinking is the infected mantana so let's reveal it now if if you're not an avid reader of foreternia.com why aren't you an avid reader of foreternia.com you get all the news well if you were an avid reader you have you would have learned today that john delancey is the actor who's going to be playing granamir now De john delancey is the actor who played q on Star Trek The Next Generation, and he's so awesome in that role. And that's what he's most famous for. And I think he's going to bring a lot of gravitas, you know, to this role of Gra uh, of Granamir, who was originally played by John Irwin in the uh, 1983 filmation cartoon, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. So I think John is going to do an amazing job. And this actually marks that we have three now. Star Trek alumni in Masters of the Universe uh, Revolution. We have Captain Kirk, we have Dr. Beverly Crusher, and now we have Q, all in different roles of this show. So that's pretty awesome. Being a uh, Star Trek fan, and I know there's a lot of Star Trek fans out there, that's pretty awesome. Okay. Uh, now here we have a great new shot of the Sorceress Tila spinning around, wielding, you know, both her Sorceress staff, her Zoar staff, as well as her uh, snake magic staff, her staff of Ka. And uh, it looks like she's casting what looks to be, you know, an amazing combined magic spell. And I can't wait to see that. Okay. All right. All right. So next we have He-Man, a different looking He-Man, followed by Orko and Gwildor, you know, charging towards the camera. So let me jump ahead and then jump back. So based on the Masters of the Universe Revolution Gwildor action figure, uh, we know that he comes with a power sword, the one he's holding in this trailer. But Gwildor, the figure, also comes with a cosmic key, which makes me believe that the cosmic key will be featured in the show. Otherwise, why would the show's figure come with it? So let's go back and discuss that He-Man in the prism of the cosmic key. So here we have a He-Man, possibly King He-Man, dressed in a very cool outfit that feels like a combination of discarded concept art from the 1987 Masters of the Universe movie 
And, you know, that like insignia from the 2021 CG series, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, the kids show. And now, especially with his hair looking longer, he looks kind of like a He-Man from a different time, a different dimension. Something that a cosmic key can do. Now, that's something also the power can do, right? It could grow hair. We saw Tila's uh, hair go from short to long as you change it to Sorcerer's Tila. But I do want to put it out there that's possible that this is He Man from another dimension. And what kind of lends to this bizarre alternate He Man idea, this theory? is after the Gwildor and Orko shot here, there are two sequential shots of Skeletech firing from his Havoc Staff, which is, you know, infused to his arm. But in one shot, the Havoc Staff is connected to Skeletor's right arm, and then the other shot is connected to his left arm. And Skeletech's cybernetic eyes also change sides. So is this simply Netflix, you know, flipping one of the scenes? Um, hitting, I'm hitting my mic. I'm so excited. Um, and so is this simply Netflix flipping one of the scenes for their trailer because they found it more aesthetically pleasing, you know, that way? Or are there two, yes, two Skeletors here? The answer is Probably, probably it's flipped, but, you know, with the cosmic key in play and the fact that both He-Man and Skeletor here, look at Skeletor, do, do look incredibly different at the end of this trailer, it at least makes me open to the possibility that this, this interdimensional He-Man and Skeletor, you know, another one from the multiverse is here in Masters of the Universe Revolution, so... We shall see if I'm crazy. I'm probably crazy. <laughs> and finally, after four decades, after 40 long years, it looks like He-Man and Tila are finally going to romantically kiss for the first time in animation. And what a place to do it during Adam's transformation into He-Man. If you look inside here, um, what appears to be, you know, that massive energy and uh, Adam's holding up the sword, you know, and calling down the power. Instead of Adam in that energy ball all alone, we see both Adam and Tila inside too, leading to what looks like is going to be one amazing and powerful <laughs> kiss. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this analysis of the Masters of the Universe Revolution full trailer. And be sure to watch Masters of the Universe Revolution. It debuts on Netflix this January 25th, and all five episodes are going to drop at the same time. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and visit us at fourternia.com for all the latest news and content involving Masters of the Universe and Masters of the Universe Revolution, including a Masterverse figure checklist and a community forum. Well, that's it. I want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.